Good morning and welcome to St. Thomas Church. I am Matthew Burdett. I am the rector here. It is, it is such a joy to be here worshiping with you today. Um, and we've got many days to look forward to. And thank you, thank you for. Thank you for coming out here today um, on the Feast of All Saints to be, to be together and to celebrate um, all the gifts that God has given to us. There's a couple of things to announce. Um, at the end of the service, if you're looking at your bowls, and you'll note that after the procession out at the end of the service, you will all hold on to your bulletins and follow the procession outside, where we will gather outside and sing. But, um, a couple of other things. Um, Evie, my wife, who's sitting right, sitting right there, um, she and I are so glad to be here and we love to meet you all. Um, surprisingly, I think I've done an okay job recognizing some of you just from the top third of your faces, which is good. Um, but we'd like to meet you in the words and say, so we have these scheduled meet and greets um, over Zoom or in person. And so if you could just go on the church website and sign up, we would love to get to know you a little better, and I'm sure that you would uh, like to hear who we are. Um, additionally, tonight, uh, at 5 p.m., we have an song uh, for, for All Souls, um, where you remember all those who have died and trust them to God's care. There are still spots to sign up for for tonight, so please do consider coming tonight. Uh, to begin our worship, before our choir sings and you sing in your hearts, Will you please stand with me as I pray? God of grace, we thank you for the love that you've given to us in yourself, in Jesus, and calling us together by your Spirit into the communion of your saints. Give us the grace, we pray, to worship you today and always fill us with your Spirit and send us into this world and witness to your love. May today be a day that we re-encounter your love anew and re-encounter one another in that love. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Of the Lord. 
Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against me falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord.
just a mystery you can get to know. My, my perhaps most profound example of this, the most profound, the most exciting, and I think most graceful example, is, is my knowledge of my wife. There are times, maybe you'll relate to this, there are times when I think that there's some flaw that I have that Evie has not discovered yet. <laughs> and then, I'm like, oh no, she forgot that. And then she says, I, I already know. I, I knew that since I met you when you were alive. Like, <laughs> um, and it's a mystery to me that she has this capacity for this kind of love that I didn't imagine. I still feel like I'm getting to know her. It's a part of the kindness and, and humor of God that human beings are this way. But more basically than God's kindness or humor, I think there's something else at play, which is that human beings, as you may know, are made in the image and likeness of God. And God, who is infinite, and God, who is love, who has made us in his image, has therefore made us these infinite mysteries of love, where if we get to know one another, there's no end. The more you get to know another person, there's always an opportunity to get to know the love of God more deeply as you get to know them, because they are an image of God. If you can get past the things that annoy you and the flaws, there's just God's love. There's no getting to the bottom of a person, is there? It's like the mysteries of your own heart. Now, of course, we are just images of God. And we are invited to get to know one another and to trust that in getting to know one another, we will discover more and more mysteries of God's love. And the reason this is, is because God has already invited us to get to know Him. And God, who is infinite love, allows us to get to know Him truly, but it's never fully. You can't get to the back of God and then check it off your list and say, okay, God, God. Right? There's always more, but the more that there always is, is God's love. That's the mystery of who God is, that we get to know God. And at first, like it is with people, we only hear about God's love. Sometimes we don't fully know it firsthand. We just hear about God's love. And we come and listen. See if we can see it for ourselves. The community that we are a part of, the church, the people of God, stretches all the way back for generations and generations to the people of Israel, which began as a people who heard something about the love of God. You see, there was this fugitive. Killed a guy. He ran off. He came home. He told his family and his friends, the God of our ancestors has appeared to me in the burning bush. And as he spoke to the people about God, and as they heard about God, these people who were slaves listened. And as they listened, they followed, and they came to be free. And then, as this fugitive, his name was Moses, kept talking to them about God, they were not just a disparate collection of tribes of slaves, they became a people. A nation, the people of Israel, the people of God. And they had an opportunity to see God for themselves, but that was scary, and so they said, Moses, you, you go talk to God yourself, and you, you tell us what he says. So Moses goes up the mountain, and he speaks with God. And he comes back down the mountain, you know the story, and he tells them what God says, he gives them the Ten Commandments, he gives them the whole covenant, and then he says to them, I put before you life and death, blessing and curse. If you will just keep these commandments, Moses says, the Lord is going to bless you. And God's blessing is going to be wealth and prosperity and security from your enemies. You have children. It's going to be great. You're going to be happy. God's going to bless you. 
That's what people heard. And then, centuries later, the one whom Moses was just a foreshadowing of appeared. Jesus also found himself surrounded by a crowd the way Moses had been surrounded by a crowd. And while the crowd that surrounded Moses was a group of slaves, the crowd that surrounded Jesus, they were not necessarily legal slaves, but they were sick, they were diseased, they were afflicted, they were suffering under the power of demons, they were, they were disabled. They were just a crowd. And Jesus saw the crowd, and like Moses, he went up a mountain, he sat down, and he spoke to them, and the people saw for themselves the Lord who had long ago spoken to Moses. No longer a pillar of cloud and smoke here before them on the mountain in the flesh. And the Lord said to them, Blessed are you who are poor. Blessed are you who mourn. Blessed are you who hunger and thirst. This is, of course, the way that the Gospel of Luke tells it. Luke has the Beatitudes framed mostly as physical or emotional suffering. Matthew's Gospel, the one we heard today, invites us to look at the inner, deeper, spiritual reality of the effects of sin that even our very souls can be impoverished. The hunger and thirst that we feel can be a hunger and a thirst for justice. The end result, though, is the same. Jesus has done what Moses did. He has gathered a crowd, and he has made a people, but there's a key difference. The people who are made at the foot of the mountain when Jesus gives this sermon are not a nation who are promised blessing only if they obey. The blessing that Moses promised to the people of Israel was a blessing of wealth and security and comfort and joy. The blessing that Jesus extends to the people of this mountain is for the poor and those who suffer and those who are hungry. The boundary of those who get to receive this blessing from the Lord is far greater than they had heard. These people had heard the law of Moses. They heard about the Lord, but when they saw him for themselves, whatever they heard was exceeded by what they saw. And this is, of course, the pattern of Scripture. And the only people who are going to be spared from this catastrophe are those who receive a seal from God. And then John hears the number of people who are going to be sealed. Only 12,000 people from each of the 12 tribes. 144,000 will be spared. That's not a lot of people. But then, having heard, John looked. And when John looked, he saw gathered around the throne of God and of the Lamb, a multitude worshiping God that could not be numbered from every family, language, people, and tribe. Countless. Not defined as a nation based on blood or geography or race or class or political party or ideology, or anything but the love and grace of God that had gathered them together from across the nations. John, in his, vis in his vision, saw the culmination of that community that had been gathered around Jesus when he first began with simple words, Blessed are you who are poor. When Jesus gives the Beatitudes, he makes a new people, the people of God, not just the nation, but the gathering of his disciples from all the nations, a multitude of which you and I are a part. He gathers us to himself. And what we have heard is, is so insignificant 
compared to what we will see. You see, we're all gathered here today because we've heard something about the love of God. You've perhaps heard, you've perhaps heard that you are God's child. And it's true. When you were baptized, you received from God the very same spirit that came to rest on Jesus at his baptism. When you were baptized, God said to you the very thing that he said to Jesus at his baptism. You are my child, the beloved. We heard this in the, in the reading from the, the epistle of John, given John in Revelation. How great the Father's love for us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. But then John continues, doesn't he? What we will be has not yet been made known. What we know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. You have heard of God's great love, and yet, you are invited to live by the promise that God, who is love and who is infinite love, even the love that you heard will be exceeded when we live no longer by faith, but by sight. That is God's promise for us. In 1913, let's switch gears. In the year 1913, St. Thomas Church called a new rector. He was 28 years old. Some of you think that I'm not. <laughs> not that. So, he was 28 years old. He served for 40 years. During his time, I'm hoping you have a different experience, there were two world wars and a global pandemic. And on the Feast of All Saints, in 1935, Nathaniel Grodin stood before this church, and he observed something. He observed that that year, there had been an unusually high number of people who had died. Not so unlike this year. And in making that observation, I think what he was saying is, St. Thomas Church is entering into a time of uncertainty. And then, as now, St. Thomas Church lived and lives by the very same promise. We have heard of God's love. God has made us his children. And we continue to live in the hope of God's love because there's no end to it. Whatever we face, whatever happens, we do not reach the back of God's love. Whatever comes our way in this uncertain time, we have the hope, the promise of God's love that has no end, no matter what happens. And as you and I get to know each other, you're going to find that I'm a human, which has some drawbacks. <laughs> I've got flaws. I'm a sinner. I'll disappoint you. However, I am created in the image and likeness of God and I'm a beloved child of God. And so, if you're willing, Get to look inside of me. If you can look past the things that annoy you or frustrate you or my families, you might get a chance to see a reflection of the love of God because that's what I was made to be. And so also with you. When I get to know you and get past the things about you that get under my skin, <laughs> I trust that I will get to see anew an image of the love of God, which has no end. The promise that we have for today on the Feast of All Saints is that we
we have been gathered as this communion by God's love. We stand around the throne, around God and the Lamb, worshiping as members of a community not bound together by what we look like or who we vote for or what language we speak or who our people are. We are the people of God gathered by the love of God and the grace of God. And if we are willing just to look rather than just listen and trust what we hear, if we look, I am confident that we will see it.
departed in eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May you also come to share in our heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer, and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God and our name. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you.
As we turn our attention now to the table to celebrate Holy Communion, um, just a reminder that all who are baptized are welcome to receive Holy Communion, regardless of age or regularity of church attendance. If you feel called to fellowship with our Lord at the table, please do come. Um, if you wish to receive Holy Communion, um, at the time of reception, um, uh, I'm not sure why. Dismiss you at your rows down the aisle. I will place the consecrated bread in your hand. All you need to do is place your hands out flat like that, and I will place the bread in your hand. If you require a gluten-free wafer, please place your hands face down, which will signal to me to grab a gluten-free wafer for you. If for any reason you wish not to receive Holy Communion, you are still more than welcome to come forward and cross your arms, and I will give you a blessing. Walk in love as Christ loved us, and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Saints, 
you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses, that we might rejoice in their fellowship and run with endurance the race that is set before us, and together with them receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on them in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son and our Savior Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacraments of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you all.